Right, hi everyone, um, welcome to this session and this time we are at the amazing Norton Disney. It would be silly not to use the house pellet. Built this morning, hoppers four. Um, it's been slicking up, I don't know if you can see the slick out there. So this is again solid bag, same rod, but me being me, I can't sit still anyway. So if I ain't, I ain't had anything within 12 hours, I'm already looking. What Danny and Embraer have created here is uh, something special and the uh, future of carp fishing looks very good. So I'd like to say well done to them for that. Um, right, so yeah, so we're at uh, Norton Disney. Um, we are on Turner's Lake and we've picked Peg 15. It's sort of in like a narrow neck of the lake so about half just a little bit less than halfway up the lake uh, we've seen fish uh, we've uh, wrapped up to 15 wraps and we've found which is our maximum distance we can fish is 65 yards so we've just come rod length short of that um, we found a nice gravel area and we spotted that put a spod mix in there and stuff like that so we'll show you that spod mix later but we've got two rods on it for now and then hopefully get more liners but and then hopefully we'll have uh, some fish so we'll go to the uh, spot mix now we'll show you that now right i'm just going to take you through the mix that we're going to be using in this session in here i've got a kilo of 10 mils a new nutty bait that we're working on um we're going to start so we've got that in there we're going to add some sweet corn because the fish in here love sweet corn so i've got a kilo bag we'll get the whole lot in there and we'll be silly not to use the house pellet um, so I've got 25 kilo sack here and apparently they love the pellet in here so we're, we're going to stick quite a bit of these 8 mils in there. Right so we've put about 5 scoops of that pellet in there. Uh, so it's going to give it a mix round. So I don't know if you can see in there gives a nice, the yellow gives it a, a sight attraction. The oils in the pellet are gonna draw the fish in. And we've got some smaller boilies in there for them to keep them grubbing around. And we're gonna chuck in a couple of handfuls of the new infusion, just in case there's like the fish out there that like a bigger boilie, stuff like that. So it gives them different sizes to keep picking up. So when, we're, when we've got out there, a solid bag out there and our little pop up, they're not sucking on one size of bait, it's different all the time, so they have to suck harder a little bit. And then obviously, hopefully, onto the bait, and then we'll get one off that. So, also I'm gonna crush a few of these up, just to release the flavor a little bit more. These are this, these are the frozen boilies. Still gone, I've been air drying them for two or three days, they're gonna be hard, so. So we crush a few of them up, get them in there, mix it up a little bit. Just gonna add a little bit just a bit of a scent in the water of our new liquid liver. It smells lovely. So it's gonna put a bit of that in there. Just gives it a little bit more of a traction. And that'll just float up through the upper layers in the water and stuff like that. Give that a mix. It stinks, it smells nice. Here we are. So we've got that now. So that is literally the mix. So that'll go in the water. Obviously all that liquid liver will wash off a little bit and cloud the water up and put flavor all through the water. So that's it, nice and simple. 10 mil boilers, sweet corn, eight mil pellets and a few 15 mil infusion. And hopefully that's gonna get us a few bites. Right, now we've showed you the spod mix. We're gonna get some out into the lake. Now we're looking at the uh, lake map of this place and the depths and everything and stuff like that. It's pretty featureless, the odd little plateau here and there, but nothing major like major gravel bars or any dips or anything like that. So it's pretty flat, pretty barren. So really the major feature is gonna be your bait. So we've been told that basically don't be afraid to put some bait in. So we are gonna make our own feature with the bait. And unfortunately on here, I can't be as proactive as I normally am chasing fish around the lake. It's a bit more of a bait and weight situation. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep, I've started off with about 25, 30 spods and I'm gonna keep introducing probably five, five or six spods every half an hour, 40 minutes. 
Um, keep that trickling in, trickling in. So hopefully when they turn up, they're going to be a pack of fish that's going to come up, turn up on us. And we can get multiple takes, double takes and stuff like that. So let's get some bait out. Right, so very uneventful last night. Uh, nothing at all, even a couple of anglers around the lake have said how quiet it's been. Uh, there was no action, not seen any activity for a good 12, 15 hours. Um, we saw fish when we first arrived, but after that, we didn't see anything from like 10, 11 o'clock onwards. So I was up this morning, half past four, uh, had a quick walk around onto Billy's Lake and, and all the other lakes as well while I was going around. Didn't see any other fish apart from Billy's Lake. I must have seen 15, 20 fish showing on there. So unfortunately, again for me and James, it is a early morning pack up and a move, hopefully onto some feeding fish and hopefully we'll get some fish to show you. Right, so as I said this morning, uh, there was no fish showing. We was getting no indications on turners. So I had a walk this morning about half past four. I uh, took the dog out with me and uh, walked onto Billy's and literally on the back pegs, like seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine, there was fish just showing everywhere about, about 80 to 90 yards out. So went back to the swim, got packed up, moved around here pretty quick. Put um, put three rods out there, one on a single pop-up, two on solid bags, uh, one at 95, or two at 95, one at 90. That's the maximum range on this peg where it can fish at. And it's probably only been out about an hour. Literally, it was a perfect time and I've just finished my omelette for my breakfast and away it's gone. So hopefully we'll get this one in and the move, it was paid off again. Yeah. So it just goes to show, I could have sat there all day waiting for the fish and I'm here till eight o'clock tonight. I could have sat there, but just, if it's not gonna feel like it's not gonna happen, just don't sit there and expect it. Just wait and think, oh, that's it. I'm not gonna catch anything. Get on your toes, get moving, get some fish. Go and find them because there's always an opportunity. There's six lakes on here, I think five or six lakes. There's going to be an opportunity on one of them lakes at least. So always stay on your toes, keep looking for the fish, keep moving, keep searching for them. When you're live. Uh, yes, got it. What's that? Right, so here's that fish from that uh, run we've just had. Uh, 17 and a half pound. Um, after that long trek this morning from the other side of the complex at about five o'clock this morning, we got round here about half past six, quarter to seven. Uh, first thing I did was get the marker rod out, find a nice clear spot, because I know it is a little bit weedy in this lake. Uh, found a spot lovely, about 93 yards. So we're just inside our, our range. Uh, put th two solid bags on it and a single pop up. The middle rod's gone with first, so it's only taken just about an hour. So. It just goes to prove that staying on your toes looking for fish is, is the difference between blanking and uh, catching one. So we'll get this one back and I still think it's time for another bite. So we're gonna get some more bait out, get this one back and try and catch another one. Right, so it's been, time's it now, about half nine. So it's been literally an hour since that last fish. Same rod again, same spot on solid bag. Um, it's been slicking up. I don't know if you can see the slick out there, um, but we've just been sat on our hands waiting, seeing fish show after fish show after fish show. So we've just been waiting on our hands and uh, it's finally gone. So the move's paying off this morning, no sleep, but I'm here to catch fish, so that's what we've come to do. Sorry about that, I got a bit quiet then. It just got stuck in a bit of weed, yeah. So get this one in, and then we'll see how it's like. Get the, when, we, when we've netted it, we'll unhook it, put it in a sling, and I'll uh, get everything sorted out. I've got solid bags ready tied up, so literally I've got a loop to loop one up and chuck it back out, because I think there's still time for another two or three, maybe four bites, hopefully. Guys, come on, I've got it, I've got it, we've got it. Yeah, so we've got a bit of grass weed and stuff in here. So he's trying to keep the rod high, trying to keep the fish above the weed a little bit. Got to be careful though with stiff rods and barber sucks, because now's the time that he can lose the fish. 
under the rod tip. And bury himself in a bit of weed now. Sorry, man, I've gone a bit quiet. <laughs> All right, just concentrating to get this in. It's hard earned fish, this is, isn't it? Oh, here we go. It's coming, mate. It's coming. It's a nice fish, that is. Oh, my neck. Your camera out. Got it, yes. <laughs> Got it, mate, yes. 17, 12, 17, 13. 17, 13. Okay, okay, so here we go. It's fish number two. Uh, just under 18 pounds, 17 pounds, 13. Seems like we've got a little bit of a spot going now. Um, same rod again, the middle rod, solid bag, couple of spots of the house pellet and uh, infusion boilies over the top. And it seems to be working on here. So I'm gonna get some more bait out, gonna get the rod redone and see if I can pick up some more because there's still a lot of fish topping out there. So I'm hoping if I can keep it going, it's about a bite every hour, an hour and a half. So hopefully we'll keep the fish coming in, getting a few bites and hope for a 20. Right, well, while James is sat in a nice dry bivvy behind me, doing a lovely job of the video and again, um, I'm stood out here playing another fish. Um, same rod again, middle rod. I fished it 95 yards, solid bag. And this one does feel a bigger fish, a lot bigger. Oh, sinking. <laughs> oh. Right, so this is uh, bite number four. Uh, but fish number three, we lost one earlier. Sorry, liner. And uh, so this is again, solid bag, same rod. Out at 95 yards towards, uh, towards the middle of the lake where we've seen the fish this morning showing. This one's slightly smaller, just over 15 pan. But it just goes to show that uh, the solid bags are working. And we moved from turners onto here because we weren't getting nothing on there, we saw nothing. So I'm just being a bit unlucky with the size again, but you know, we're gonna get the rod back out and see if we can get another one. Right, I've just had another bite. Uh, this is a single pop-up. Instead of the solid bags, the wind has got up really bad. So really struggling with the solid bags to get them out 95 yards. So I've just gone with single pop-up and uh, literally it's only been out 20 minutes and it's rattled off. So another, another nice fish, don't think it's very big. But it's another bite, so it's producing fish. The fish is just here, look. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, right, so this is uh, uh, fish number four. Nice little single yellow, showing, chucked to showing fish, right on the boundaries of 95 yards. They were just behind, so we've sort of got right on the edge, left it. Uh, it's been struggling now to get solid bags out. This crosswind that's come on is is making it very difficult. So resorted to single up baits, over showing fish and uh, resulted in this little one. It's probably about, I don't know, 13, 14 pound or something like that. But goes to show getting on fish can get your bites when you're struggling elsewhere. So let's, uh, let's get this one back and pray for a 20 or a 30. Right, so we're into another fish. Um, single yellow pop-up again. Um, just because of the wind hacking in, we couldn't get the solid bags out, like I said before. So I literally just sat here, waited, watched. The fish had been moving in close into the area, picking a fish up, then they're moving back out. So it's sort of like every hour to an hour and a half, we seem to tend to pick one up. Um, got that bite live on camera. So hopefully James will show you that in the video. So, but yeah, so we're into another one now. 
can't really tell you how big it is yet. Feels decent fish. Put it this way, it ran off and then took the run with it, but yeah, we're into another one. Single up mate seems to be uh, the way forward at the minute, to getting the presentation right. Because when we were chucking solid bags out, they're drifting off the spot with the bow in the line. So it's three and a half ounce leads chucked out to uh, 95 yards, keeping a tight line to it so it's presented just over the bait. So yeah, so uh, we're into another one. Another nice scaly one, mate, isn't it? It's a loot, worldy fish. Fish and mega. Oof, the hell. Yeah, so managed to get this fish out of the weed. It got me weeded up a couple of times. I actually thought it'd come off at one point, <laughs> but it's now decided to go mental and under the other rods. But yeah, single up bait seems to be doing a better, don't they? Definitely. Just in this weed, you just can't present the solid bag at 100 yards, can you? 95, 100 yards. It's just not, it's just not hitting the clip properly. The bow in the lines is not presenting the bait. It's hitting the line, but it's just drifting it off the spot like 20, 15, 20 yards. So, changed over to singles, and it's, what was it, the third, second, third run? Third run, I think. Well, that's tiny. That's tiny. Just sort of let it go here. <laughs> right, so uh, here's the fifth fish. Oh, it's not the biggest, but nice, lovely young fish. Uh, not what we're after, we're after a 20. So we're not going to bother weighing this one or anything like that. We're just, what we're going to do is just slip it straight back in. But yeah, go to show that the uh, single up baits are working. So we're going to we'll slip this one back and get that single up bait back out. Yeah, right, so we've just uh, slipped that small fish back. We didn't bother weighing it or taking a photograph of that. It was uh, a bit too small for us, really. But uh, yeah, so I've, I've put the left hand rod back out. Uh, the wind's eased off just slightly now, so it's allowing me to get a better line lay from because I've got a real bad crosswind. So that rod's gone back out, the left hand rod. I've brought the middle rod back in, and that I've put a recast that again so I can get a better line lay. And the line angle is now perfect. The line lays a lot better with the wind just dropping at like four or five miles an hour. So hopefully, uh, they might be the last cast of today. We've got a couple of hours left, I think, roughly. Maybe an hour and a half, I think we're leaving about six. So yeah, so uh, they might be the last cast. Um, hopefully they're not, and the next one will be a 20, because that's what we're after. And maybe a 30, you don't know. But yeah, so uh, if we get any more, then uh, we'll get back to you and show you. Right, so we've got another bite, single uh, hook bait again. This one was on the middle rod this time. Um, I was using a, a yellow and a pink, and uh, the yellow one kept on going. I've had, I think, three bites off the yellow. So, wound in the middle rod, stuck myself a yellow pop-up on, whacked it back out. It's been 20 minutes, and this one's rattled off. So, it just goes to show that if one colour's working, Get the other, get another rod on it as well. So I've now got two on yellow, and it's produced, and it's now produced another fish for me. So, and this one does actually feel a better fish. But yeah, we uh, the bites are starting to come thick and fast now. They're getting a little bit, bit more regular, rather than every hour and a half. It's like every half an hour. So I recast all the rods again now since I put another solid bag out there. The winds died down enough for me to get decent presentation on a solid bag. So all three now rods are probably, I don't know, six, seven foot apart out there. A few spuds over the top and uh, we've got another fish. So just trying to steer it away from the guy next to me. All right. right, so this is the fish that we've just had, uh, just over 16 pound. Another absolutely stunning fish from this lake. Every single fish has been stunning. It's been amazing. The, the, the scale pattern of these fish is, out, is outrageous. Every single one's been absolutely stunning all individual fish as well we turned a, a bad session into a good session off the move i think this is like the six fish out of seven bites yellow pop-ups solid bags singles going straight out to 95 yards a little bit of spot and pellet over the top and it's been producing the fish 
So we've still been unlucky on the sizes again. We're one to the 20, um, but they're all like mid doubles, very nice fish. So let's get this one back. I think we've got about half an hour left of the session, see if we can get another one. Right, so we're coming to the end of the session now. Um, let's give you a quick recap from this morning. Uh, we started off this morning at about four or four. Obviously on Turner's never had anything. So uh, obviously the quick walk around, came over to Billy's, saw probably 20, 30 fish in a space of about 20 minutes. So obviously back to the pad, get James, come around here. Uh, looked on the uh, map, what was the peg? Uh, our range we could fish at and our, and our border, what we could fish into. And it was 24 rats, 90, 95 yards. So got the rods out, got plenty of bait out there. There was fish showing all over and, and it took them a couple of hours to get on the bait. But once they got onto the bait, it was a steady, steady bites every hour and a half, uh, which turned into every hour and then, well, not every hour, about an hour, then sort of half an hour into bites. Just keep topping it up. Yeah, and just to finish off, uh, Norton Disney, if you're ever thinking about paying a visit to this place, what a complex. Uh, Danny Fairbrass, Embryo, Ben the manager, I would like to, just like to say thanks very much for having us down here and allowing us to fish and film. It's an amazing complex. Fish are outstanding. Each one was a lovely fish, top quality. And I will definitely, definitely be back again with a bit more knowledge under my belt this time. And uh, hopefully we'll get amongst some of the bigger fish and a lot more fish. But yeah, we've done seven bites, uh, six fish landed, a couple of 17s, few mid doubles and stuff like that. So we've turned what could potentially have been a really bad session into a good session, solely just because we've got on our toes, we've used our eyes, we've found some fish and got on fish. Now I could have sat on turners, could have stayed there for the rest of the day, maybe hoping the fish might turn up, but just knew it weren't gonna happen. I spent enough time on the bank to realize that, you know, when it ain't gonna happen, when it is gonna happen. So. But me being me, I can't sit still anyway. So if I ain't, I ain't had anything within 12 hours, I'm already looking. So, but it just goes to show that use your eyes, stay on your toes, you know, and there's always an opportunity on any lake, especially on complexes like this that have got six lakes that you can, there's an opportunity to catch fish. So, I mean, we've done pretty well today to be fair. I think we're the only ones that have sort of had multiple, well, some would say multiple, but had sort of seven or eight fish. So, you know, it's, it's work for us. So we're going to get these rods in, get packed up before it starts chucking it down again, and we'll see you on the next session.